Hey guys, Jennifer here with The Family Fudge and welcome to a very special edition of Bunches of Lunches. If this is your first time here, welcome. On this channel, I love sharing fun lunch ideas and I share a huge variety on this channel. So whether you're looking for healthier lunch ideas, lunch ideas for picky eaters, hot lunch ideas, budget-friendly lunch ideas, or even if you're looking for over-the-top themed lunches, then I've got you covered. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. Today's video is a very special edition because the kids and I are attempting a fun new challenge. In the past, we've had so much fun doing lots of different kinds of challenges, but today I thought I would switch things up a bit and make this challenge all about fruit. For this challenge, I'm going to be making a special lunch for each one of my kiddos, and that lunch has to be based on one special fruit. To decide who gets what fruit, we're going to use the mystery box. You can reach your hands in there, feel what kind of fruit it is, and then guess what you think it is. Mm, maybe a strawberry. Ding, ding, ding! You got it! Reach your hands in there and feel it. Reach your hands. Guess what it is? It's spiky. It's spiky? Mm -hmm. Well, what kind of fruit is it? Um, I know what it is. It's a pineapple. <gasps> you got it! Reach your hands in. Feel something around. It's an apple? Yeah, that was so easy! <laughs> Go ahead, Jackson, reach your hand in there. What is it? <laughs> you have to guess. <laughs> Banana. Oh, you got it. <laughs> so now that we know who has what fruit, the challenge for me is to figure out different ways to add that fruit into their lunches and hopefully make something that they will eat. Okay friends, I'm kicking this off by making my daughter Lily's lunch first since I think hers is going to take the longest. Now for Lily's main course, I was thinking about making a good old peanut butter and jelly sandwich with strawberry jam, but I wanted to come up with a different way to make a PB&J. So I'm going to try to make something I've never made before. So for this version of peanut butter and jelly, I'm going to start by unrolling a sheet of crescent dough. Now I want to make sure this doesn't stick so I'm going to put a little bit of flour on my board and then I'm going to very gently kind of roll this out just a little bit. Next, in a separate microwave safe bowl, I'm going to add about two to three tablespoons of smooth peanut butter. And then to that, I'm also going to add about one and a half tablespoons of strawberry jam. Of course, we're going with strawberry here because everything in this lunch has to have some kind of strawberry in it. Now to get this to spread easily over my dough, I did go ahead and pop it into the microwave for about 15 seconds or so, and then I mix the two ingredients together. So I didn't have to spread them out separately. Now, as you can see, I have a nice thin layer of peanut butter and jelly on my dough. I did wanna make sure that the layer is nice and thin because I wasn't sure if it was gonna ooze out everywhere if I added too much. Now to this, I was thinking about adding some little pieces of fresh strawberry as well, but because I don't want this to end up being soggy, I'm gonna go ahead and use some freeze-dried strawberries instead. Now you guys, I get these at Target and they are so delicious. They're literally just strawberries that have been dried. All of the moisture has been taken out so they're very crispy, but they're also sweet and they are so good. And as you can see, I kind of just broke these up a little bit with my hand and I sprinkled them all over the top. If you are somebody who likes to play with your food and be creative, you should definitely try making this recipe. So now I'm just rolling this up as tightly as I can and then I'm going to cut this into eight Eight pieces. So now at this point I'm going to go ahead and add these to my baking sheet and I'm going to cook them at 350 for about 10 minutes or so but I am going to keep my eye on these since I've never made them before. And check it out you guys these smell so good especially if you love peanut butter as much as I do. 
Now since these kind of look like cinnamon rolls, I wanted something that I could drizzle over the top, but I didn't want to make these too sweet. So I decided to just take some of the strawberry jam that was the same kind I used on the inside. And while these rolls are still hot, I'm just going to brush a little bit of the jam right on top. This is going to keep these rolls nice and soft, and it's also going to make them a little bit shiny. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add about two of these rolls into Lily's lunchbox, and then I'm going to move on to the next part of her lunch. For this lunch, I definitely wanted to include some kind of strawberry yogurt, since as you can see, at my house I have quite a lot of different kinds of strawberry yogurt. Now I would love to know in the comments down below, out of all of these choices, which yogurt is your favorite. For Lily's lunch, I decided to go with this kind of yogurt. We have never tried this before. It is actually dairy-free. It's made with oat milk. So just like with all of the Chobani flip yogurts, you have the yogurt on one side and then on the other side you have lots of yummy toppings to kind of flip over into the yogurt. This topping has granola, little pieces of strawberry, and chunks of chocolate. Now I'm just going to add one strawberry on top as a decoration and then I'm going to move on to Lily's vegetable. Now yes, the vegetable also needs to include strawberries, so I decided to make a strawberry spinach salad. This is something that I grew up eating all the time. My mom used to make this and I loved it. And it's actually really simple too. So I'm just adding some baby spinach leaves directly into this section of the lunchbox. And then of course you also have to have strawberries in here too. So to make these extra pretty, I'm actually going to cut these into strawberry shapes. Usually I just cut a little V at the top of the strawberry and then I cut them in half. But for a salad, I like the slices of strawberries to be a little bit thinner. Now I'm just going to place these directly on top of the spinach leaves. And then usually the salad also has lots of other yummy toppings. So I'm gonna add a little bit of feta cheese in here. Not too much, cause I'm not sure Lily likes this or not. Then I'm going to finish this off with a few little pieces of pecan. And on the side, I'm going to be adding a strawberry vinaigrette. And I put it in this adorable little salad dressing bottle. That way Lily can add it herself. She can add as much as she wants. Now usually in each lunch, I try to include some kind of snack or side dish as well. So for this strawberry themed lunch, I thought I would go ahead and make a strawberry trail mix. First, I'm gonna be adding in some lightly salted cashews. It's always good to have some sort of salty element in a trail mix. After that, I'm also gonna be adding some dried strawberries. Now, I get these at Costco and they are really good, but they're also really sweet. They're nice and chewy. They're almost like a natural fruit snack. And then lastly, I'm keeping this trail mix super simple. I'm also gonna be adding in some of these strawberry flavored sour raisins. Now, I know that sounds weird, but trust me, if you like the combination of salty, sweet, and sour, then you would like these. And now to complete Lily's lunch, I'm also gonna be adding in a strawberry lemonade. Okay, Lily, are you ready to see? Yeah! Open it up. <gasps> There's so much stuff. Yeah. was the strawberry lemonade, um, the, the yogurt, and the wall. Next up, I'm going to be making my son Griffin's lunch. The special fruit for his lunch is pineapple, which is definitely not his favorite fruit, so hopefully he will enjoy this lunch. But to make this lunch quick and easy, I decided to go with a barbecue chicken pizza with pineapple. Now you guys, one of the easiest and quickest ways to make pizza at home is to use these non-bread pieces. They're already the perfect shape, the perfect size. They're already cooked and ready to go. Now, whenever I make a barbecue pizza, I don't like to just use barbecue sauce or pizza sauce. I like to use a little bit of both of them together. So I'm just adding a little bit to each of my little non-bread pieces and I'm going to spread that out. Now to these pizzas, I'm also gonna sprinkle on just a little bit of mozzarella cheese. 
followed by little pieces of chicken. Now this is just leftover rotisserie chicken, so it's already ready to go. And I'm not adding too much on here. Usually I end up overloading pizzas and then everything just falls off. So I'm gonna try not to do that today. I am, however, going to be adding just a few little pieces of purple or red onion, followed by a few pieces of green onion. And then of course I cannot forget the pineapple. So I'll add that on there as well. And then to make sure everything kind of stays on the pizza, I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more mozzarella on top. And that's gonna kind of help all of the ingredients stay on the pizza. And then just because I am totally extra, I'm also going to drizzle just a little bit of that barbecue sauce mixed with the pizza sauce right on top. Not only does this look pretty, but I think it gives it lots of extra flavor. So now I'm just going to pop these into my oven at 350 for about 10 to 12 minutes or until the cheese is melted. So now just like with Lily's lunch, I'm gonna be adding in even more fruit. I have some teeny tiny chunks of pineapple that I'm going to add right over here. And then on top, I'm gonna to be adding some pineapple yogurt. All of my kids love yogurt, so I'm gonna to try to add some kind of yogurt in all of the lunches today. Now to this yogurt, I have a few more things I want to add. First, I'm adding some thin slices of pineapple right on top. And then because I think they go really well together, I'm also going to be adding some unsweetened coconut flakes on here as well. I just love the combination of pineapple and a coconut, it is so good. Now moving on to the veggie, I really had to think long and hard about how I could add pineapple into a vegetable that my son Griffin would eat. So I ended up finding this recipe for a pineapple cucumber avocado salad. Now I know Griffin likes cucumbers, I know he likes avocado, I know he likes pineapple, so hopefully he will like this. I will go ahead and link the full recipe down below if you guys wanna check it out. So now I'm going to add some of this really interesting salad to the back section of Griffin's lunchbox. Now because Griffin is a little guy, I'm not gonna be adding too much more to this lunch box, but I do have a very interesting pineapple drink that I'm going to let him try. Now I say interesting because this is an aloe drink that is flavored with pineapple, but it also has chia seeds in it. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's little flecks of chia seeds floating around in here. I know to some people this might actually look a little bit creepy, almost like little tadpoles in the water. But yeah, we have never tried this before. You guys let me know in the comments down below if you've ever tried it. Okay, Griffin, are you ready? Yeah. Open it up. My favorite part was a pizza. The pizza's the winner. Okay guys, next up I'm going to be making Mackenzie's lunch. She is my oldest daughter. Apples are definitely not her most favorite fruit. It's not something she would choose. So she's gonna be trying a lot of new things today. I'm going to start by making a classic chicken salad. So in here I'm just adding some chicken, some celery, some finely diced onion. I also like a good squeeze of lemon in here. Then of course I'm also adding a little bit of salt and some pepper, but this recipe recipe is a little bit different. You know, sometimes chicken salad recipes will call for craisins or grapes, but since this is an apple themed lunch, I'm gonna be adding some chopped up pieces of both Granny Smith apple and Fuji. That's a great combination of sweet and tart. And for some extra crunch, I'm also going to add a good amount of slivered almonds to this chicken salad. So now I'm just going to mix this all up until everything is combined. And then instead of using regular sandwich bread, I decided to go with this farmhouse loaf. These pieces are a little bit wider and they're definitely more dense. I'm just gonna go ahead and get the chicken salad onto here and I'm going to try to press it down as much as I can so it doesn't fall out of the sandwich. 
because now I'm actually going to go ahead and trim off the crust. And that's because if I don't, this bread doesn't actually fit in my lunchbox. So I'm just going to trim off all of the edges and then I'm going to cut the entire sandwich in half. That way I can add them right into the lunchbox. They fit perfectly this way. Now moving on to the fruit and veggie. For her fruit, of course, I'm gonna be adding apples, but I decided to go with applesauce. It's been a long time since we've had applesauce and I have a ton of it in my pantry. So I'm gonna add that in here. I'm also gonna add a fresh slice of apple just to decorate the top a bit. And then for the vegetable, again, just like Griffin's lunch, I found a really interesting salad that I'm hoping she will like. This is a carrot apple raisin salad. Now again, I will go ahead and link to this recipe that I'm using down below, but this is pretty unique, you guys. This has apples, shredded carrots, crushed pineapple, shredded coconut, vanilla yogurt, mayonnaise, which sounds really odd, and then a squeeze of lemon juice. Now honestly, this salad is reminding me of the types of salads I used to see at church potlucks, but I never actually tried because it just looks interesting. So yeah, Mackenzie will be trying this for the first time today, but I'm gonna give it a try too. Next, on the side, I'm also gonna be giving Mackenzie some of these freeze-dried cinnamon apple slices. Now, unlike apple chips that are crispy, these are a different texture altogether. I mean, they are crispy, but they're not chewy at all. I'm just gonna add a few of these right in the back. And then on the other side, as a special treat, I have something that we've never tried before. This is an apple pie Lara bar. So this totally sounds like a delicious dessert, but it actually only has a few ingredients, no added sugar, it's plant-based and gluten-free. So it seems like a dessert, but it's actually pretty good for you. And now finally, to complete Mackenzie's lunch, I'm going to add in a very fun apple drink. Instead of regular apple juice or apple cider, I decided to give her an apple Snapple. Now, I remember when I was her age, Snapples were all the rage. Of course, back then, they were actually in glass bottles, which is why we weren't allowed to bring them to school. But nowadays, they're in plastic bottles and we're at home anyway, so she's gonna try it. Hopefully, she'll like it. Are you ready to try, Kenzie? Mm -hmm. Open her up. What was your favorite part? The apple, snapple, and the sandwich. Now, that brings me to my son Jackson's lunch. For this one, we're going with a banana theme. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, this is the lunch that gave me the most trouble. Because honestly, I couldn't find a lot of banana flavored things at the store. For Jackson's main dish, I decided to go with some banana pancake sandwiches. Of course, these are on the miniature size. I'm just adding a little bit of Nutella onto each of these. Of course, you could use peanut butter or sun butter. That would work great too. And then because I have to get banana in here somewhere, I'm just going to add a slice right on top of each of these pieces. And then I'm going to close them up so I have like a little mini banana pancake sandwich. Now moving on, I'm also gonna be giving Jackson a full banana in his lunch. And I have this really fun banana holder. It keeps bananas from getting crushed. So if you're someone who likes to travel with your bananas, and you don't like them to get crushed, you might wanna think about getting one of these. Next, over on the side, I'm gonna be adding some banana yogurt. And it was actually kind of challenging to find just banana flavored yogurt. Most of the time it's banana plus strawberry. But I was able to find this brand, and I'm gonna go ahead and get it into the lunchbox. And to give it a little bit of extra crunch and more banana flavor, I'm going to add some of this banana chocolate granola right on top. Over in this corner, I'm adding some of these lime flavored plantain chips and then right next to that I'm gonna be adding some regular banana chips then when I was at the store I was able to find these new banana snacks these are by nature's bakery and it says that there's actually fruit and veggies baked into this chocolate 
banana bar. Yeah, I've, we've never tried these before, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this right on the side because I literally can't think of any other banana flavored items. And I can't forget about the drink. I did go ahead and pick up this strawberry banana flavored fruit nectar. Again, I couldn't find just banana, only strawberry banana, but it does sound good. Can I open it? Yes. Ooh. Ooh, your lunch has a lot of chocolate in it. This. My favorite part was the banana pancakes, but I didn't really like the granola bar. Thanks for watching.